Fu Sanyi and Jiang Mashi were together out of curiosity. Jiang Mashi and Fu Sanyi are together just to sleep well. In this one year limited hidden marriage, they agreed to take what they needed and only enjoy it. But the fact is, Master Fu is very domineering. You can bully Jiang Mashi on your own, while others can bully Jiang Mashi, ranging from losing everything to being beaten to ashes. The crowd felt that Fu Sanyi was not worth it, as they felt that his black swan had been bitten by a toad. But it was discovered that Jiang Mashi, who had taken off her disguise, was stunned and outstanding. She was a genius hacker, a ghostly doctor, and also a deadly ghost everyone began to think that Jiang Mashi was worthless again. How could a fairy marry a disabled person? The man who had been in a wheelchair for several years suddenly stood up and showcased the commercial empire he had built over the years. Later on, people began to envy the two of them for their talent and beauty. When it was natural, Jiang Mashi realized that she was just a substitute in the heart of Fu Senyi love is like arsenic hidden in sugar. Take it seriously, you'll lose keywords of the novel. Limited Time Wedding Pet with no pop-ups, download the complete collection of Limited Time Wedding Pet TXT, and read the latest chapters of Limited Time Wedding Pet Chapter 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 After a Night of Ups and Downs when Jiang Mashi woke up, she found an arm still wrapped around her waist and turned around in shock. I saw the man still asleep. In the morning light, his facial features were like the most outstanding works of top sculptors. Under his lightly closed right eye, there was a seductive tear mole that was irresistible to behold. However, it was this handsome face that was less than a foot away from her that instantly blinded Jiang Mashi. Fu, Fu Yuhan. Fu Yiming's uncle. She actually got into a relationship with her fiancé E.S. uncle. What the hell is going on here? She only remembers being divorced by Fu Yiming last night, feeling frustrated and having two drinks at the bar. As a result, several thugs had ill intentions towards her and had no choice but to hide in a room. Later on, her memory became less clear. I only vaguely remember that a man suddenly appeared in the dimly lit room. The man was tightly trapped in her limbs, with a scorching temperature on his body, whispering in her ear. Help me. MD, I'll help your dead head. But perhaps it was alcohol that caused it, or maybe she just wanted to repay Fu Yiming with a green hat. Under the anesthesia of that alcohol, her brain was like a dream but she never expected that it wasn't a dream. And this dog man is actually Fu Yiming's uncle, Fu Yuhan. It's really dog blood and head. But that's not right. It's rumored that the mastermind behind the Fu family, although handsome and unparalleled, collapsed early in life and could only travel in a wheelchair. This is something that everyone in Yenching knows. But why did she feel that the man's legs were full of explosive force last night, causing her to be beaten to death several times? Jiang Mashi rubbed her head, which was painful from a hangover, while Yu Guang unconsciously glanced at the perfect figure of Fu Yuhan beside her. Just as she scanned the man's thigh with her gaze, the door was knocked on, and the man's long arm, which had landed on her waist, tightened violently. Is this a sign of waking up? She immediately grabbed the blanket and covered her forehead. Fortunately, she covered her face in time, and the man quickly got up and quickly put on his clothes. Come in. Assistant Qi Jing was stunned as soon as he entered the door. The young man blinked his eyes and dared not be confident. Third master, this. He didn't expect to see the figure of a woman on Fu Yuhan's bed, and couldn't find any words for a while. The man in front of him, once and now, has brought the Fu family to its peak, stunning and extraordinary, making the entire Yen city revered as if it were a man of divine slander. Since the car accident a few years ago, he no longer manages the affairs of the Fu family and only enters and exits the Buddhist temple. He also wears black Buddhist beads in his hands all year round, not being close to women. But today, the figure of a woman appeared on his bed, let Yi Chen die for me now. Qi Jing regained consciousness and saw the man condensing the lump on the bed. 
He immediately understood that Fu Yuhan's absurd night with this woman was probably the work of his friend Yi Chen. Yes, Qi Jing immediately ordered. Although Fu Yuhan no longer solely controls the Fu family, the most powerful family in Yenchen, after the car accident, his iron-fisted skills in dealing with people are still there. Poor Yi Xiao, it seems there won't be any good ending. Why did you come to see me early in the morning? Fu Yuhan asked as he put on the watch on the bedside table that had been randomly removed by a woman last night. The Jiang family has been urging us to talk about Fu Xiao's marriage as soon as possible. The second master's intention is that he and his second wife are both on business trips and he wants you to come and talk to them first. Interesting, he couldn't help but sneer. Looking at me sitting in this wheelchair, all sorts of ghosts and snakes want to get into the Fu family and share a share of the pie. The Jiang family is also cooperating to make money. This money-oriented expression is really disgusting. The conversation between Fu Yuhan and Qi Jing was clearly heard by Jiang Mashi. Especially Fu Yuhan's evaluation of the Jiang family was precise and sharp, with an indescribable tone of disgust. It's just unclear. If he knew the woman who went to the clouds and rain with him last night, who was also the Jiang family that made him extremely nauseous, what would be his expression the two of them walked outside while talking, probably going to deal with Yi Chen. Jiang Mashi secretly pulled out a gap from the blanket covering her face. Seeing Fu Yuhan walking towards the door with both legs, her eyes were filled with both amazement and amazement. So last night was not her illusion, could he really walk on the ground? However, Jiang Mashi knew that these issues were not within her control. She hurriedly put on her bloated suspenders, patched up her ugly makeup with an air cushion and an eyeliner pen to cover up the face that made the sun fade, and then left before Fu Yuhan came back. Fu Yuhan finished his task and returned to his room. Looking at the ball on the bed, he said, You worked hard on what you did last night. Here is a five million check. If you feel it's not enough, you can just ask for anything else, but after you get the money, never give it again. Before he could finish speaking, his eyes swept slightly. I saw the eerie silence on the bed, which made Fu Yuhan suspicious. He extended his long arm and lifted the blanket. Where else are there women? Under the bedding, there lay two white and chubby pillows with big thorns, as well as a dried blood rose. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Jiang Mashi dragged her tired body back to the Jiang family, thinking that her relationship with Fu Yuhan was limited to last night. With her and Fu Yiming breaking off their engagement, they will never meet again in the future. But she never expected to see him again so soon she had just arrived home when she heard the sound of conversation coming from the living room. Yiming will come to discuss how to publicly announce his and Vivi's marriage news. Sigh, I thought he and Ma Shi could achieve success. Father Zhang Guoxing sighed, but the sense of regret in his tone was not strong. There's actually nothing to be ashamed of. He and Vivi are talented and beautiful, Ma Shi is ugly and incompetent. It's only when they are together that they truly feel wronged by Yiming. Mother Yuman's background was not good and she used to rely on her young and beautiful appearance to climb up the high branch of the Jiang family. But her speech and behavior are still too straightforward, unlike other wealthy women who are full of sarcastic remarks, but can pretend to be harmonious in the spring breeze. As soon as Jiang Guosheng heard her speak so freely, he frowned. Just say this in front of me, don't say it in front of the Yiming and Fu families. M.O. She is our biological daughter no matter what she says. Of course I know. But sometimes I can't control it. Look at her since we brought her back four years ago, she has been teaching her how to keep going, painting messy makeup all day, and even getting into a third-rate technical college in college. Even if I had a barbecue, I was better than giving birth to her. Yuman also felt uncomfortable in his heart. She was previously ridiculed by the two younger sisters-in-law of the Jiang family due to her background, and was excluded from the wealthy women's circle. Fortunately, 
Jiang Guixin's business has been doing better and better in recent years, and she is gaining popularity in this city. As a Mrs. Jiang, her position in the circle is also gradually rising. If they find out that her biological daughter turned out to be something like Mashi, they may not know how to joke about her genes. Fortunately, we only announced our adoption of her at the beginning, allowing Vivi to stay with us. You see, Vivi is becoming more and more beautiful and capable, and can earn us face wherever we go. Jiang Mashi leans on the porch counter and listens. The thick black eyeliner is a bit blurred, which makes people can't see her expression clearly. Mashi, why don't you come in? The sound coming from behind Jiang Mashi abruptly stopped the conversation in the living room. Yu Man and Jiang Guisheng turned around at the same time and saw Jiang Mashi and Jiang Weiwei standing at the door one after another. Yu Man quickly glanced at Jiang Mashi's colorful face, with a clear tone of dissatisfaction. Did you come back without saying a word? Then I looked at Jiang Weiwei again. She was wearing a pink dress, with a peaceful and well-behaved appearance. Yu Man's eyes couldn't help but soften a bit. Just arrived. Jiang Mashi's tone was polite. But Jiang Weiwei was particularly enthusiastic, taking the initiative to hold the hands of Jiang Mashi and Yu Man. Let's go to my room. Yinshang's new product is on sale today. I'll go grab two outfits for mom and you. Let's give it a try first. Yinshang, a brand that was just established six years ago, is highly favored by wealthy women and socialites both domestically and internationally. The new product will be sold out on the day it is released. Jiang Weiwei was able to grab two new products for each of them, which was also a great effort. Yu Man is a super fan of Yun Shang and was immediately coaxed to smile and say, We Vivi really have a heart. He also said to Jiang Mashi, Mashi, thank you, sister. Jiang Mashi withdrew her hand and said, Thank you, but I don't need it. When Yu Man Dun was angry, Do you think your messy appearance is particularly attractive? If it were, you wouldn't have been divorced. Vivi kindly wants to help you dress up better. Why are you being so flirtatious? Jiang Mashi's mind flashed with a person covered in blood, and as her breath drifted, she grabbed her hand and said, Go back to the Jiang family, don't let them find you, live well. She wanted to explain that she was just keeping her promise. I'm not being pretentious, I'm just. Before she could finish speaking, Jiang Weiwei took Yu Man's hand. Mom, I was too anxious to make Mashi look better and ignored her feelings. Don't blame Mashi, just blame me if you want to. This statement was simply spoken in Yuman's heart, how could she be willing to blame Jiang Weiwei? She affectionately hugged Jiang Weiwei's shoulder and said, What do I blame you for doing? You're also doing it for her good. It's just someone's heart, no matter how hard you cover it, you can't keep it warm. Jiang Mashi didn't explain further as she watched the two of them snuggle up intimately. Jiang Weiwei looked at Jiang Mashi, then at Yu Man, and finally didn't say anything more. At this point, Yu Man said again, By the way, Yiming and his uncle are coming to discuss your marriage. It should be almost here. Speak of the devil. As soon as Yu Man finished speaking, the servant led the person in. Jiang Mashi turned around and saw Fu Yiming dressed up in a dog-like manner, as well as the man who spent the absurd night with her last night, Fu Yuhan. He changed into a black suit, which was already outstanding in appearance and temperament, and now he looks even more stunning. The tear mole at the end of the right eye makes that flawless face look even more sinister and chilly, with full destructive power. Even sitting in a wheelchair and being pushed by Fu Yiming, he is like a dark night king. Set off Fu Yiming, who is usually handsome and outstanding in the second generation of wealthy people, as if he were a follower. When Fu Yiming pushed him in, Fu Yuhan glanced at the asymmetrical display and decoration in the living room, and his eyebrows furrowed a little imperceptibly. But soon, the Jiang family all gathered together to say hello, and the atmosphere was excellent. Jiang Mashi was originally looking at Fu Yuhan's legs, wondering why he could stand and insist on sitting. I don't want to, but he suddenly looked at Jiang Mashi. 
Although it was just a faint glance, it made Jiang Mashi feel unfathomable, as if she had been exposed to the events of last night. She quickly shouted, Uncle, and then didn't make a face. Fu Yuhan nodded slightly, and there was no further intersection between the two. Mashi, you just came back from outside. Let's go upstairs and change into a new outfit first, Jiang Guisheng smiled. In Jiang Mashi's memory, Jiang Guisheng smiled at everyone. But at this moment, she understood his disgust from his eyes, probably afraid that she would make a fool of herself here. However, she didn't want to stay here to face Fu Yuhan, so she followed the steps given by Jiang Guisheng and prepared to go upstairs. With a cat's meow, she suddenly turned around and saw the puppet cat owned by Yu Man suddenly darting towards her from the dark cabinet. Jiang Mashi is most afraid of small animals with fur. As she watched the puppet cat dart towards her, she hurriedly retreated. Accidentally, she fell and sat on something. Jiang Mashi turned around in shock and suddenly met Fu Yuhan's cold and gloomy black eyes. Later, she realized that she had fallen on Fu Yuhan's lap. Fu Yuhan wanted to push her away immediately, but suddenly he smelled the cherry blossom fragrance on her, just like the woman from last night. So is she the woman from last night? End of this chapter Chapter 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Jiang Guisheng and others were greatly frightened by the scene before them. Ma Shi, come down quickly. Jiang Guisheng's smile mask couldn't be lifted. But Jiang Ma Shi still tightly tugged at the man's clothes, even if she knew, the man's eyes were almost dripping with ice. Because that cat is right in front of her. Squinting his noble blue eyes, he looked at her coldly. At this moment, the man's cold and stern voice came to his ear. Are you planning to celebrate the Chinese New Year on my lap? When he spoke, his own breath seemed to tease Jiang Mashi's earlobe, inevitably causing her to imagine the heavy breathing he had buried in her last night. She trembled suddenly, but still remained strong and composed, turning back to Fu Yuhan and saying, at most, it will last for Qin Ming. It's still here, I won't go down. In Fu Yuhan's mind, disturbed by the fragrance of cherry blossoms, a young man's figure immediately appeared. That young man is not afraid of heaven, not afraid of the earth, only like Jiang Mashi, afraid of small animals with fur. In his trance, he once again forgot to push Jiang Mashi down. At this moment, Jiang Weiwei quickly picked up the cat and said, Mashi, I caught the cat. Don't be afraid. Fu Yiming frowned and finally said the first sentence of today to Jiang Mashi. Jiang Mashi, why don't you get out of here quickly? If my uncle gets hurt by you, be careful I'll kill you. Jiang Mashi saw the cat in Jiang Weiwei's arms, so she got off Fu Yu's cold leg. Sorry, Master Fu. M.O. she was afraid of cats, so she bumped into you. Jiang Guisheng quickly apologized. Yu Man sharply rebuked Jiang Mashi, saying, No matter how scared you are, you can't run to the legs of your elders. Did your brain get kicked by a donkey? What should you do if you hurt Master Fu? Although this man is no longer in charge of the Fu family, no one can forget his iron-blooded wrist back then, and he is still very afraid of offending him. Fu Yiming also glared angrily at Jiang Mashi and asked, Uncle, are you okay? These ugly monsters are more than enough to succeed than to fail. Even the first time he brought the elders of the Fu family to the door, he was able to mess things up. Fortunately, his engagement with her has been cancelled, otherwise he would definitely be even more angry now. Uncle, why don't we go to the hospital for a check dot up? Let's see where we're injured. Jiang Weiwei also spoke out in time. Fu Yuhan glanced at Jiang Mashi and saw that she only lowered her gaze, with a look of knowing she was wrong, but next time she dared to look more like that young man. Although he was aware that she was not the young man after all, the anger in his heart inexplicably dissipated. Forget it. It didn't hurt either. As soon as his words fell, others also felt relieved. They quickly scolded Jiang Mashi again before politely welcoming Fu Yuhan into the door. 
Jiang Mashi took the opportunity to go back to her room and operate on the computer. She ate a few cookies and went to the bathroom to wash away the stickiness from last night before dressing neatly again and sneaking out of the house. Not far away, a luxury car slowly passed by Jiang Mashi's side. At the moment when the rear window slowly lowered, Jiang Mashi saw Fu Yuhan's almost perfect profile. Uncle. I can't find a car here, I'll give you a ride. The man glanced at her, his face as cold as ever. Jiang Mashi thought that she hadn't apologized to him just now, so she also got into the car. The car began to move forward, and Jiang Mashi apologized. Uncle, I'm sorry about what happened earlier. I'm quite afraid of cats, but the more you ignore that kind of creature, the more it likes to challenge you. So, the fault lies with that cat. The man gently stroked the Buddha pearl on his wrist, his deep voice making his scalp tingle. Jiang Mashi gritted her head and explained, of course, I also have to take half of the responsibility. Speak eloquently. The man gave her a cold glance, his aura strong and gloomy. Jiang Mashi. Dot. She regretted apologizing to him voluntarily. But at this moment, the man asked again, what shampoo do you use? His nose was still filled with the fragrance of her cherry blossoms. The closer you get, the more you feel the same breath as the woman. Jiang Mashi didn't expect Fu Yuhan to ask such a question. When she turned around in shock, she met the man's deep and unpredictable black pupils. Jiang Mashi quickly said, My shampoo is a very popular brand, probably used by many people. Is that right? The man turned around and looked at the woman. In his black eyes, there was an endless darkness that filled the entire car with a suffocating sense of oppression. So where did you go last night? End of this chapter Chapter 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Last night, I went to the city of No Night, drank a little wine, and then stayed overnight at a friend's house. Jiang Mashi's heart was almost at a standstill, as if the man had already peeked out. She had committed this heinous act against him last night. Uncle, what are you suspecting me of? No, you're overthinking. The man coldly glanced at Jiang Mashi again. Seeing her wearing suspenders, she looked bloated and uninteresting. This face is thicker than the city wall, and its eyeliner is thicker than the eyebrows. It doesn't touch the word beauty at all. But the woman from last night, with her delicate lines, definitely deserves the word beauty. So, it shouldn't be her. The reason why he suspected her was because he had beaten Yi Chen so hard that he couldn't look at anything except his face, and Yi Chen couldn't tell who the woman from last night was. According to him, he originally found a woman for Fu Yu Han last night, but the woman waited in the originally booked private room all night without waiting for anyone. So Fu Yu Han asked Qi Jing to find someone. But according to Qi Jing's investigation, there were about 500 women who entered the city last night, and only 10 of them successfully reached the VIP floor. There were only three people with no companions, including Jiang Mashi. So he asked her, but after asking, he felt like he was overthinking. Fu Yuhan didn't ask any further, and the two of them had no further communication until Fu Yuhan took her to the bus stop at the foot of the mountain. As soon as Jiang Mashi got off the car, without even having time to thank her, Fu Yuhan's car flew away. Watching the car go far away, Jiang Mashi's suspended heart returned to its original position asterisk on the other side, after Jiang Mashi got off the car, Qi Jing looked through the rearview mirror and saw Fu Yuhan frowning slightly, sorting out the morning newspaper placed on the back seat. When he neatly stacked the morning newspaper and the crease at the center of his eyebrows disappeared, Qi Jing began to report the latest progress of the investigation. Third Master, all the surveillance cameras in the city after midnight are gone. Fu Yuhan's eyes darkened and he said, when I retrieved it in the morning, didn't you say it was still there? Yes, but when I looked back just now, it disappeared. Even the ones we copied before disappeared without a trace. Qi Jing also said, technicians say it's like the pen of Hacker X. Hacker X. 
Fu Yohan's sharp eagle falcon suddenly felt a little more dazed. Hacker X was once a myth in the entire hacker community, and even now his name still ranks first on the hacker forum list. He used to be enemies and friends with Hacker X, and he even added a gaming friend to Hacker X and made plans to meet him. But after that basic information was sent out, Hacker X seemed to have evaporated from the human world. But he can't remember how long it has been and hasn't received any news about Hacker X. Because four years ago, Hacker X suddenly disappeared. The hacker community is speculating that perhaps Hacker X is no longer in this world. It shouldn't be him. Not to mention the unknown whereabouts of Hacker X, just because Fu Yuhan knew about him, he was doing international big orders. How could such a small matter be worth his effort? Seeing Fu Yuhan so confident, Qi Jing skipped the topic directly. The surveillance footage on this side is gone, so the technicians grabbed it from the surveillance footage across the street and found that only a woman named Nshuelua who came out of the night city during that time period. Where is she now? She is working part dot time at a western restaurant called Xingguang. Half an hour later, Fu Yuhan arrived at the western restaurant and saw An Xuelua through the glass window of the restaurant. She was wearing a pure white long dress, with long hair draped over her shoulders, sitting in front of the black piano, playing the piano for the guests in the restaurant. Her makeup is exquisite, she looks very pure, and her temperament is also good. At the moment Fu Yuhan entered, the entire restaurant was so quiet that needles could be heard. Because this man is really stunning, especially with his dignity and aura that others cannot imitate. Even if he is in a wheelchair, he is like a king, which cannot be ignored. Everything seemed to have been paused, and everyone looked at him, including Ancelo playing the piano. A few minutes later, An Xuelua was assigned to Fu Yuhan's seat. This was the first time she had seen Fu Yuhan up close, even though he was in a wheelchair, his aura made her feel shorter when standing. Was it you last night? The man asked coldly. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 hmm. And Shuelua was a bit confused, but actually she didn't know what Fu Yuhan was referring to. But Fu Yuhan pushed an independently packaged medicine directly to her. Don't pretend, it's useless. You just need to take this medicine, forget about last night's incident, and this five million will belong to you. And Shuelua glanced at the outer packaging of the pill, which clearly read, Emergency Contraceptive Pill. As clever as her, she suddenly guessed that Fu Yuhan should have had a relationship with a woman she didn't know last night, afraid that she would use her mother's son's noble appearance to blackmail her. It's just that Fu Yuhan found the wrong person. And Shuelua knew she should explain it directly. But the selfishness and greed of human nature make it difficult for her to speak up. Upon seeing this, Fu Yuhan said again, if you have any other requirements, you can feel free to raise them, and I will do my best to meet them. I don't want to play the piano in this kind of restaurant anymore. I want to become a true pianist. Fu Yuhan didn't refuse either. Contact this person and he will arrange it for you. He handed Qi Jing's business card to her. And Xuelua smelled the business card and the faint scent of aftershave on Fu Yuhan's body. So she opened the contraceptive pill just now and swallowed it dry in front of Fu Yuhan. Upon seeing this, Fu Yuhan gave her a check of 5 million yuan and then pushed a wheelchair away. Until he left for a long time, Ancelo felt her heart still in her throat. But at this moment, my friend Meng Na ran up and tugged at her in anger. Shiro, how could you lie? That's Fu Yuhan. I heard he's ruthless and skilled. If he finds out you're lying, you probably won't even leave your entire body. But I'm tired, and I don't want to sneak around in such a restaurant anymore, playing for people who don't understand music at all. Then you can't lie either. We can continue to visit musician Jiang Heading like last night and let him listen to your works. You play the piano so well, you will succeed sooner or later, there's no need to pretend to claim these. But we squatted all night last night and ended up sleeping in the hallway. Did anyone squat down? No. 
and Shueloa and Meng Na have known each other since childhood and have always had a good relationship. They learn the piano together, go to school together, and now they also work part dot time at a western restaurant and go to squat at Jiang heading together. But Anselo felt that Meng Na, like her, longed to stand out and lead a life of being a good person. It's just that the heavens didn't give Meng Na a chance, otherwise she would definitely be even crazier than herself. That woman has all run away, making it clear that she doesn't want to have any involvement with Fu Yuhan. So as long as you don't say it, I don't say it, no one else in the world knows. And Xueluo repeatedly begged Meng Na, but due to years of friendship, Meng Na could only sigh and leave. And Xueluo watched as Meng Na left, her lips gradually curling up. Asterisk after receiving a payment reminder from the hospital, Jiang Mashi pretended to be ugly and arrived at table 18 in the city that never sleeps. As soon as Yu Ding Ding saw Jiang Mashi, he handed her his handbag. This is 50,000 yuan. Where's my muscle calming pill? After opening the bag and checking the cash inside, Jiang Mashi handed a small pill to Yu Ding Ding. The relationship between Jiang Mashi and her parents is becoming increasingly strained, and they have long stopped all of her credit cards. Therefore, Jiang Mashi has always been making money by helping a few specific people mix and match muscle pills. Remember not to eat anything too cold during medication. I understand. But why do you keep insisting on cash transactions? Are you guarding me? Yu Ding Ding is the leader of the night scene in Yenchen, and more and more people have been coming to find her for entertainment recently. And all of this is thanks to Jiang Mashi's formulated skin calming pills, which make her skin snow-like and emit a unique fragrance. However, Jiang Mashi's insistence on low.key cash transactions has forced Yu Ding Ding to take one night off every month. It's not about you, it's just about protecting others. The advantage of cash transactions is that they do not need to use the internet or leave any information. Alright, I'll leave first. Don't you want something to eat? Yu Ding Ding just ordered two glasses of wine and a few sweet desserts that looked good. But Jiang Mashi refused, no need, I brought some delicious food myself. She waved the biscuit in her hand, put away the money, and then Jiang Mashi waved goodbye to Yu Ding Ding. Just before taking a few steps, I ran into a group of acquaintances on the sixteenth table. How dare you come out to play, you ugly monster! Aren't you afraid to scare others? I heard that Yiming is getting engaged to Vivi. This ugly guy probably came over to get drunk and want to lose his virginity, but he didn't even look at his own figure and appearance, so he sent it to someone to sleep, probably no one wanted it. Led by Lin Xian and Lin Mei Han, the Lin siblings ranked fourth on the Yenching Rich Merchant ranking. One of them is Fu Yiming's close friend, and the other is Jiang Weiwei's best friend. Naturally, neither of them likes Jiang Mashi and makes things difficult for her. Driven by these siblings, others only sneered at Jiang Mashi. Jiang Mashi didn't want to have too much involvement with these people, ignored their mockery, and walked away directly. But Lin Xian's brother Chen Haobin rushed forward, holding a cut cake and blocking Jiang Mashi's way. You can leave. Today is Lin Xiao's birthday, and the cake is too big for us to finish. Can you help us share a portion before leaving? He smiled maliciously and even raised his hand to deliver the cake to Jiang Mashi's face. It's difficult for Jiang Mashi to guess what he wants to do. She immediately lifted her foot and kicked Chen Haobin between his legs. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The cake only hit Jiang Mashi's clothes, hair, and chin. But Chen Haobin ignored his image and rolled on the ground on the spot. Others quickly surrounded the situation and demanded that Jiang Mashi pay for the bleeding. Ugly, how dare you hit Chen Haobin? You're doomed. Jiang Mashi looked at them with a large number of people and suddenly felt a bit tricky. Just then, a cold and sharp male voice came from behind. What are you all doing? Everyone quickly turned around and saw Fu Yuhan. Although he is in a wheelchair and no longer in charge of the Fu family, 
he always carries a strong aura of a predator at the top of the food chain, making others instinctively submit in fear. Lin Xian dared not make any rash moves in front of this man, only saying. Third master, Hao Bin just wanted to ask this ugly monster to feed the cake, but she beat Hao Bin up like this. Is that right? The man's voice was incredibly cold, and his gaze towards Jiang Mashi was like new snow on a branch. He wanted to bully me first, and I'm not made of clay. Of course, I will resist defense. Jiang Mashi spoke frankly. But in fact, she didn't think Fu Yuhan would help her. I don't want to, Fu Yuhan's response surprised her again. Just like Chen Xiao, I also like to feed people cakes. A sentence of Chen Xiao made Chen Haobin and his friends jump with fear. Because although Fu Yuhan is no longer the third master who once dominated Yanchen, his rank and aura are still beyond the reach of this group of people present. So they all know that not only Chen Haobin, but anyone present cannot afford his title. At this moment, the waiter who had just followed Fu Yuhan had already sent a 20.8 inch cake. Fu Yuhan glanced at the cake and said, Hey, Chen, don't eat anymore. Don't leave until you finish eating. Until the waiter started stuffing cake into Chen Haobin's mouth, and Chen Haobin's desperate struggle for mercy was in vain, Lin Xian and others were still confused. They never expected that Fu Yuhan would help Jiang Mashi. Chen Haobin couldn't bear the greasiness of the cake and struggled to vomit before being forced to feed it again, creating a very eye-dot catching scene. No one dares to plead for Chen Haobin, afraid of being implicated. Chen Haobin's physical strength was almost exhausted, and his lower body was severely injured. After eating half of the cake, he completely fainted. If you dare to stir up trouble like this again in the future, don't come to the City of Eternal Night. After Fu Yuhan's cold eyes scanned the few people present, he asked Qi Jing to push a wheelchair and leave. Bai City is an industry under the Fu family's name and is currently the first choice for leisure gatherings among upper-class people. Although Fu Yuhan is no longer in charge of the Fu family, his words still carry a lot of weight. If he is included in the blacklist of Night City, how can he continue to stay in Yancheng in the future? No matter how much Lin Xian and Lin Meihan try to kill Jiang Mashi, they can only temporarily calm down. Because they could all see that Fu Yuhan was not only warning Chen Haobin just now, but also warning them and others. Jiang Mashi was also a bit surprised earlier that Fu Yuhan would help her, but now thinking about it, she only feels that he is setting rules for people who come to the city that never sleeps. After Fu Yuhan left, Lin Meihan and the others took Chen Haobin to the hospital, while Lin Xian stayed to take care of the aftermath. Jiang Mashi was also preparing to leave, but Lin Xian stood in front of her. Ugly eight monsters, don't think that if Third Lord gets involved, you won't do anything. Haobin is the only child of the Qin family. If something really happens, what will you compensate them for? Why do I have to compensate? He did the wrong thing, and I didn't ask him for compensation, which is already quite good. But Lin Xian, with a posture of risking his dignity, continued to block Jiang Mashi's way. You must come with me to the Chen family to kowtow and admit your mistake, otherwise you won't want to leave here. Chen Haobin came to attend his birthday party, and Lin Xian had an inescapable responsibility. So he plans to take Jiang Mashi to the Chen family for disposal and pick himself clean. Jiang Mashi was particularly annoyed by Lin Xian's obstruction and was pondering how to get rid of it. At this moment, Yu Dingding passed by and saw that she was covered in a lot of cream. She looked very embarrassed and took the initiative to step forward. I have brought a set of clothes to change and wash, I'll lend it to you to handle first. Jiang Mashi also felt sticky and uncomfortable all over, so she agreed. But Lin Xian refused to give up easily and while Jiang Mashi went to the restroom with the rest of Ding Ding to change clothes, he still squatted outside the restroom. In the bathroom, Yu Ding Ding noticed that Jiang Mashi also had cream on her chin, so he handed her a makeup remover and said, wipe your face too. Jiang Mashi picked up a makeup remover and wiped her chin, only to find that half of the makeup on her face had been removed. 
She decided to wipe off all the makeup on her face and wash it with water about ten minutes later, Yu Ding Ding and a girl wearing a deep blue long dress with a hanging neck walked out and chatted as they walked. You used to be so beautiful. Why did you deliberately hide your beauty? Yu Ding Ding really felt that Jiang Mashi was as beautiful as a fairy. In front of Jiang Mashi, her top spot in the night was clearly overshadowed. Being good dot looking doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing, Jiang Mashi smiled. At this moment, Lin Xian blocked in front of Yu Ding Ding again. What about those ugly monsters? He even stretched his neck and looked behind Yu Ding Ding. But in the end, he turned his gaze to the girl next to Yu Ding Ding. Are you? Jiang Mashi. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 This exquisite face is everywhere, this skin that can be blown apart, this watery and seductive eyes, and this curvaceous figure. If Jiang Weiwei is the stunning beauty of Yencheng, then the girl in front of her is a fairy who descended to earth. It's really beautiful, every point grows on his aesthetic. Let him feel for the first time since birth what palpitations are. Do you still want me to go with you to the Chen family to kowtow and apologize? Don't be so unreasonable, okay? It's you who made the mistake. Jiang Mashi didn't expect that Lin Xian was standing at the door of the restroom and was blocked by him. She was so angry that she wanted to argue with him. But at this opening, Lin Xian was almost sure that this was Jiang Mashi, and even his voice was the same. Just facing such a beautiful person, how dare he not be unreasonable? The blush spread directly to the roots of his ears. Right, right, wrong, it's me. I'm being unreasonable. You don't need to go with me to the Chin family, I'll go and explain to them clearly. It's their son who is wild and doesn't understand etiquette, and he deserves to be beaten. Jiang Mashi looked at the person in front of her with a face redder than a monkey's buttocks, feeling a bit confused. This attitude changed too quickly, making her unsure of what to say. She decided to leave with Yu Dingding Ding first. Lin Xian stared at Jiang Mashi's distant and graceful figure, as if immersed in his own world. It's not an exaggeration to say that at that moment, he even thought of the names of their future children, calling them Lin Aishi regardless of gender. It wasn't until his phone rang that Lin Xian regained consciousness from his previous obsession the phone was from Lin Xian's sister Lin Meihan. Brother, have you brought that ugly monster to the Qin family? No. It's difficult to explain why I didn't bring it over to the Qin family. Brother Haobin's injuries are quite serious. If the recovery is not good, it may not be humane in the future. I will hire experts to diagnose him and ensure that he will have no problems getting married and having children in the future. In any case, I will not entrust Mo Shi to them for handling, and you are not allowed to trouble Mo Shi again in the future. Lin Meihan was almost dumbfounded on the phone and said, What? Brother, are you crazy? If it weren't for being crazy, how could her brother cover up for that ugly monster, affectionately calling him Mashi, and even telling her not to trouble him again? I'm not crazy, it's just. I'm in love. Listening to her brother's youthful tone, Lin Meihan had terrifying thoughts. Isn't the romantic partner the ugly one? Children should not inquire about adults' affairs. Lin Xian's mind was now filled with how to pursue Jiang Mashi, so he hung up the phone directly. Asterisk after Fu Yuhan entered the private room, he asked Qi Jing to leave. Yi Chen has already started drinking and is hugging the popular little flower Shui Shui. There are also several girls next to her who are on par with Shui Shui. Yi Chen is a typical male and female figure, especially with his peach blossom eyes, which look no more serious than his colorful high-cut clothes. After Fu Yuhan entered, it seemed like the center of light and shadow. Brother Han. Yi Chen immediately loosened his mouth and introduced himself to those beautiful girls. This is Mr. Fu. I'm right, isn't that what I said? This appearance is definitely something you've never seen in the entertainment industry. The girls nodded shyly, and Fu Sanyi was indeed extraordinary. 
No wonder even in a wheelchair, the entire Yen city still flock to his famous ladies. If you like Third Lord, why don't you go up and toast? If you make Third Lord happy, what resources do you want? The girls suddenly became restless, some even came to Fu Yuhan with wine, while others peeled grapes and fed them. Fu Yuhan avoided the woman approaching, his black eyes filled with an indescribable disgust. At the same time, he looked at Yi Chen and said, What's up with finding me? I'm afraid you want to escape into the empty door again, so I'll find a few beautiful women to keep you, Yi Chen smiled. Fu Yuhan coldly scanned him and said, Get lost. Yi Chen was still frantically probing on the brink of death, Brother Han, if you don't like these, why don't you find the one from last night? It seems that the meal this morning was light. Fu Yuhan's voice even became cold. Suddenly, Yi Chen remembered the tragedy of being beaten this morning and chuckled, I was joking. Fu Yuhan glanced at him and pushed the wheelchair away. Just as he stepped out of the private room, Fu Yuhan caught a glimpse of that graceful figure at the elevator entrance, with the scent of flowers still in the air. He didn't know what was going on with him, but he unexpectedly stepped forward by some strange means. Just as the woman was about to step into the elevator, I grabbed her hand Jiang Ma she thought it was Lin Xian again, but when she turned around and saw it was Fu Yuhan, her restlessness turned into astonishment. Uncle. The man frowned slightly when he heard the familiar voice and said, Jiang Ma Shi. Jiang Ma Shi. Dot. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 8 How Did You Become Like This? The man coldly scanned her eyebrows and eyes, his black eyes deep and unfathomable. My hair and clothes were all soaked in cake just now, and a kind dot hearted person lent me a whole outfit. Jiang Mashi's tone was calm, but in fact, her heart was in turmoil. If she knew she had shouted uncle, the man would have noticed her identity, and she wouldn't even shout out if she was killed. Just now, the man's aura was so terrifying that she suddenly forgot everything around her. Seeing Fu Yuhan's gaze still closely following her without saying a word, Jiang Ma Shi could only speak again, this outfit doesn't fit well, it's extremely uncomfortable to wear. Although she said it didn't fit her well, what Fu Yuhan's gaze could see was that the clothes perfectly wrapped around her body, revealing the charming S dot curve. That slightly surprised face was even more charming. Especially those eyes, with a blush at the end, shimmering with water, enchanting to your heart. But. She shouldn't be the woman from last night. She said in the morning that she stayed overnight at a friend's house last night. And Ancelo also admitted that the woman from last night was her. After Fu Yuhan's eyebrows furrowed slightly, he released Jiang Mashi's wrist and said, It's late, go home quickly. Okay, uncle. Goodbye, uncle. Jiang Mashi quickly waved her hand and entered the elevator. After coming out of the city from never night, she ignored her inner anxiety and went to the nearest ATM machine. Just received 50,000 yuan and transferred it to the hospital payment account, but it still shows an outstanding payment of 30,000 yuan. She didn't bother to think about whether Fu Yuhan had discovered anything and started looking for more profitable part-time jobs, intending to switch jobs. Asterisk the next morning, the Yenching Technical College where Jiang Mashi was located began classes. She continued to dress up and go to school as usual. Unexpectedly, as soon as she arrived at the school gate, Lin Xian drove a dazzling yellow Ferrari and slammed the brakes, blocking her way. Sleeping in bed, Lin Xian from the first university next door has come to trouble the ugly eight monsters again. Has the ugly eight monsters ever dug up Lin Xian's ancestral tomb? Why are there so many ugly women, Lin Xianfei is holding on to her and not letting her go? I heard that Lin Xian used to like a girl from the same school, and after being rejected, he went to scare her. However, he was so ugly that he passed by and ran into her. He fairly called the police. It's really strange. How will Lin Xian play with the ugly eight monsters again today? The students from the first university and the technical college are all watching and discussing. 
but in fact, First University and Technical College are rivals. One is a school with extremely high admission scores, which is a model for incubating future social elites, the other is a school that is uneducated and has a high probability of being a social scumbag, and can be attended with just a little money. The only common interest and hobby among students from two universities is watching the academic bully versus ugly girl that usually comes out every month. Jiang Mashi watched as the crowd of onlookers grew larger and larger, and coldly glanced at Lin Xian, who was getting off the car and taking off his sunglasses. What do you want to do again? There was an undisguised disdain in his tone. I'm not doing anything today, I just want to tell you, I like you, be my girlfriend. Lin Xianchong gave Jiang Mashi a wicked smile. So the onlookers all had a ghostly expression on their faces. Because Lin Xian's appearance is quite superior, coupled with good grades and a good family background, he is the prince charming of many girls. But Jiang Mashi is not only ugly, her grades are still the last in the technical college, and she has to work part dot time every day after school, so her family is definitely not good, which is a huge difference from Lin Xian. Moreover, Lin Xian used to target Jiang Mashi, but today he suddenly changed his confession, which is truly unacceptable. Is Lin Xian crazy or has his head been lowered? Blindly guessing that Lin Xian lost in the game. This is a new way to play pranks on the ugly eight monsters. If Lin Xian likes Jiang Mashi, what will Li Shui do? During a heated discussion among a group of students, a girl named Li Shui suddenly became angry and ran away. She and Lin Xian are currently in an ambiguous period, and every time Lin Xian comes to tidy up the ugly eight monsters, he always brings a small gift to her on the way. Li Shui is the school flower of the technical college and she is also confident that she has tightly grasped Lin Xian. However, Lin Xian suddenly confessed to the ugly eight monsters. Li Shui felt her dignity trampled on her feet and immediately ran away crying. But no one noticed Li Shui's movements, because Jiang Mashi responded to Lin Xian, end of this chapter. Chapter 9 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 No Way Jiang Mashi pushed down the black frame, as if rejecting the machine without emotion. I really like you, not a prank. What I want is a definite answer. Lin Xian saw Jiang Mashi's fairy-like appearance that day, and now seeing her deliberately pretending to be ugly, he also vaguely saw her true self, and his heart continued to tremble for her. His gaze unconsciously softened and became affectionate. Definitely not. Lin Xian has never failed to pursue girls, especially in front of so many people, which can be a bit awkward. He quickly handed a movie ticket into Jiang Mashi's hand and said, then you can watch a movie with me. But Jiang Mashi had a straightforward attitude and tried to put the movie ticket back into Lin Xian's hands, saying, I won't go. In public, please give me some face, Lin Xian refused and said, anyway, I will use practical actions to let you know that my liking for you is true. Also, I'll see you tonight. Lin Xian waved his hand, handsomely propped up the car door with one hand, got on the Ferrari sports car, and walked away under the envious gaze of everyone. The crowd of onlookers also began to disperse with Lin Xian's departure, and soon Jiang Weiwei also appeared in the crowd. She was carrying a backpack, wearing the iconic white shirt and plaid pleated skirt of the first university, with long legs that were fair and straight, shining brightly in the crowd. My friend Nia Yuro suddenly noticed her in the crowd and ran up to her. Vivi, Lin Xian just confessed to ugly eight monsters, did you know? I see it. Curious, how could Lin Xian suddenly fall in love with ugly eight monsters? Does ugly eight monsters have advantages that we don't know about? such as being particularly beautiful after removing makeup. Who knows? Jiang Weiwei smiled with a calm and gentle expression. Because she doesn't think Jiang Mashi can be so beautiful. In addition, she also knew that the white moonlight in Lin Xian's heart had always been her Jiang Weiwei. Perhaps it was because she was getting engaged to Fu Yiming that he confessed to Jiang Mashi to stimulate her asterisk, Mashi, I heard that Lin Go confessed to you just now. 
Is it true? As soon as Jiang Mashi entered the classroom, her classmates whispered to each other, and Mu Wanting also leaned in at this moment. Mu Wanting is naturally familiar. When she saw Jiang Mashi alone when she enrolled last year, she took the initiative to get close. Later on, they became friends. Hmm. Jiang Mashi saw a packet of cookies in Mu Wanting's bag and consciously opened it to eat. Is this his new prank trick? Mu Wanting asked again. Probably. Mu Wanting frowned slightly as she watched Jiang Mashi eating cookies. Isn't it good for you to just eat cookies every day? Vegetables and fruits, and some of them. How unpleasant are vegetables and fruits? Are cookies the most fragrant? The two of them had just mentioned this when suddenly there was an extra freshly cooked breakfast from a five-dot star hotel in front of them. She and Mu Wanting looked up together and saw the little brother who often appeared next to Lin Xian. This is the breakfast that Xian Gu just packed for you personally, both Chinese and Western styles are available. Without waiting for Jiang Mashi to refuse, the little brother put it down and ran away. Lin Go can't be serious, can he? Mu Wanting looked confused. Who knows? Jiang Mashi still silently nibbled on the steamed buns brought by Mu Wanting. Finally, these breakfasts were cheaper than the scavengers near the school. Asterisk at night, Yu Ding Ding asked Jiang Mashi for a muscle calming pill. Moreover, she was in a hurry this time and called directly. Do you need it in the next two days? But isn't your previous muscle calming pill still in its efficacy period? Jiang Mashi was worried that excessive use of Yu Ding Ding would affect her body, so she asked again. But Yu Ding Ding said, I accidentally dropped my coin while soaking in a hot spring. Okay, I still have two pills left. I'll see you at the old place later. Jiang Mashi had just finished the call when Jiang Weiwei pushed the door in. Mimi, Mimi, are you here? She was wearing a pink nightgown, her long hair casually draped over her shoulders, looking extremely well behaved. Seeing Jiang Mashi looking at her with an expression of seeing an intruder, Jiang Weiwei was not angry either. She smiled and asked, Mashi, have you seen the cat? It can't be in my room. Jiang Mashi said. In the same space, she and the cat can only have one left. It's like this, then I'll go to another room and look for it. Jiang Weiwei left the room with a smile. Jiang Mashi squinted her eyes and picked up her phone to delete the call record from earlier. Asterisk on the same night, Lin Xian was wearing a white suit, with his black hair neatly arranged, and holding a bouquet of 99 red roses in his hand. He was waiting for Jiang Mashi to appear, and he was also confident that he could definitely win over Jiang Mashi after chasing and beating all day today, as well as tonight's movie theater reservation for love, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 In the blink of an eye, it was almost time for Lin Xian to book a movie ticket for the performance, and the light dimmed. Lin Xianxiao looked eagerly at the entrance. At this moment, a person wearing a white dress with flowing long hair came to his side. Mashi, it's good you're here. Lin Xian was extremely happy and wanted to go see Jiang Mashi a few times. But Jiang Mashi kept her face shut and covered it with her long hair. Lin Xian thought she was seeing him with her true face and felt shy. After watching the movie, let me take a good look at you. He reached out to grab Jiang Mashi's hand, and Jiang Mashi struggled for a moment before letting him grab it. He was puzzled because Jiang Mashi's hands were a bit thick and still had calluses. But before Jiang Mashi was adopted by the Jiang family, she lived in the countryside. He thought, perhaps it was because he did too much farm work that Jiang Mashi's hands became so rough. I secretly felt heartbroken and determined to treat Jiang Mashi well in the future. So, until the end of the movie, Lin Xian tightly held Jiang Mashi's hand in his palm and pondered how to confess to her just waiting for the movie to finish playing and the lights in the cinema to light up, Lin Xian excitedly turned back to look at Jiang Mashi, and was immediately frightened. Because the person sitting next to him is a male scavenger near their school. 
Because of his emaciated body, he wore a skirt and a wig, and in the dim light, he was no different from a woman. Why the hell are you sitting here? Lin Xian quickly threw away the person's hand and rubbed his own hand on another seat in disgust. As soon as he thought of this hand holding the scavenger for over an hour, he wished he could chop it off. Didn't you ask me to change into a dress and watch a movie with you, and then treat me to eat and watch a movie? Get lost. Lin Xian Kai doesn't believe these things. He knew he had been fooled by Jiang Mashi and was furious. I smashed all 99 roses that I was preparing to give to Jiang Mashi to the ground. But the scavenger was not angry either, so he chuckled contemptuously and said, Okay, I'll just roll off now. Just as he walked out of the cinema, the scavenger took out his phone and sent a message to a certain number. Shit, get it done. Asterisk when Jiang Mashi saw the message, she happened to deliver the Shiji pill to Yu Dingding. Ding. She replied to the message, then withdraw it. Don't appear near the school these days. After the message was sent out, she deleted the original dialogue box again. Then he instructed Yu Dingding, Ding, I'll give you two pills this time, but remember not to be too greedy and use them in moderation. I know, you always remind me every time you give me medicine. After handing the bag containing money to Jiang Mashi, Yu Dingding Ding prepared to leave. But Jiang Mashi suddenly stopped her and said, Do you know what part dot time jobs you have at night? It's faster to get money. Recently, the situation at the hospital has been getting worse and worse. In addition to having to spend a lot of money every month to survive, it is estimated that two major surgeries will need to be performed next. Yu Ding Ding said, You know, I'm not from Yenchen. The only place I'm familiar with is the night. They're currently hiring waiters, are you doing it? Night is a place of sound and color. Many people wear colored glasses to see people doing things in noisy places. Even if they don't treat people with color, the outside world will still point fingers at them. So this is also the reason why she knew Jiang Mashi needed money but never introduced her job to her. She didn't want Jiang Mashi to follow her old path. Unexpectedly, Jiang Mashi asked her, do waiters make money? It's very profitable. But the premise is that you need to know how to protect yourself. Yu Ding Ding continued. Then I'll do it. Jiang Mashi's unusually firm tone stunned Yu Ding Ding before asking. The person who allows you to earn this money without hesitation must be very important to you. Hmm. Jiang Mashi smiled and nodded. Yu Ding Ding also seemed to see his former self through her. So she immediately appeared in the night with Jiang Mashi. Because Yu Ding Ding is the leader of the store, although the store manager was not very satisfied with Jiang Mashi's appearance, he still accepted her and arranged her in the VIP area where Yu Ding Ding is located. Just the next day when Jiang Mashi was working there, she ran into Fu Yuhan, end of this chapter.